I now come to the last variety of the tabby, and this can scarcely be called a tabby proper, as it is nearly destitute of markings, except sometimes on the legs and a broad black band along the back. It is mostly of a deep brown, ticked with black, somewhat resembling the back of a wild, only not so gray, rabbit. Along the center of the back, from the nape of the neck to the tip of the tail, there is a band of black, very slightly interspersed with dark brown hairs. The inner sides of the leg and belly are more of a rufous orange tint than the body, and are marked in some cases with a few dark patches, but they are best without these marks, and in the exhibition pens it is a point lost. The eyes are deep yellow, tinted with green, nose dark red, black edged, ears rather small, dark brown, with black edges and tips. The pads of the feet are black. Altogether it is a pretty and interesting variety. It has been shown under a variety of names, such as Russian, Spanish, Abyssinian, Hare Cat, Rabbit Cat, and some have gone so far as to maintain that it is a cross between the latter and a cat, proving very unmistakably there is nothing, however absurd or impossible, in animal or everyday life that some people are not ready to credit and believe. A hybrid between the English wild cat and the domestic much resembles it. And I do not consider it different in any way, with the exception of its color, from the ordinary tabby cat, from which I have seen kittens and adults bearing almost the same appearance. Some years ago, when out rabbit shooting on the South Downs, not far from Eastburn, one of our party shot a cat of this color in a copse, not far from the village of East Dean. He mistook it at first for a rabbit as it dashed into the underwood. It proved not to be wild, but belonged to one of the villagers, and was bred in the village. When the ground color is light, gray, or blue, it is generally called chinchilla, to the fur of which animal the coat has a general resemblance. I have but little inclination to place it as a distinct, though often it is of foreign breed. Such may be, though ours is merely a variety, and a very interesting one, of the ordinary tabby, with which it forms habits, temper, etc., seems fully to correspond. Still, several have been reported from Abyssinia, all of which were precisely similar, and it is stated that this is the origin of the Egyptian cat that was worshipped so many centuries ago. The mummies of the cats I have seen in no case had any hair left, so that it was impossible to determine what color they were. The imported cats are of stouter build than the English and less marked. These breeds with an English tabby often give a result of nearly black, the back band extending very much down the sides and the brown ticks almost disappearing, producing a rich and beautiful coloring. I find there is yet another tint or color of the tabby proper which I have not mentioned, that is to say, a cat marked with light wavy lines, and an exceedingly pretty one it is. It is very rare, in fact, so much so, that it has never had a class appropriated to it, and therefore it is only admissible to, or likely to win, the class for any other color, in which class usually a number of very beautiful varieties are to be found, some of which I shall have occasion to notice further on. The color, however, that I now refer to is often called the silver tabby, for want of a better name. It is this, the whole of the ground color, of a most delicate silver gray, clear and firm in tone, slightly blue, if anything apart from the gray, and the markings thereon are but a little darker with a tinge of lilac in them, making the fur look like an evening sky, rayed with light clouds. The eyes are orange-yellow, and when large and full make a fine contrast to the color of the fur. The nose is red, edged with a lilac tint, and the pads of the feet and claws are black, or nearly so. The hair is generally very fine, short, and soft. 
Altogether it is most lovely and well worthy of attention, forming as it does a beautiful contrast to the red and yellow, or even the brown tabby. A turquoise ribbon about its neck will show to great advantage the delicate lilac tints of its coat, or, if a contrast is preferred, a light orange scarlet, or what is often called geranium color, will perhaps give a brighter and more pleasing effect. This is by no means so uncommon a color in the long-haired cats, some of which are exquisite, and are certainly the acme of beauty in the way of cat coloring. But I must here remark that there is a vast difference in the way of disposition between these two light varieties, that of the former being far more gentle. In fact, I am of the opinion that the short-haired cat, in general, is of a more genial temperament, more cossity, more observant, more quick in adapting itself to its surroundings and circumstances than its long-haired brother, and, as a rule, it is also more cleanly in its habits. Though at the same time I am willing to admit that some of these peculiarities, being set aside, the long-haired cat is charmingly beautiful, and at the same time has a large degree of intelligence. In fact, much more than most animals that I know, not even setting aside the dog, and I have come to this conclusion after much long, careful, and mature consideration 